um, with our little wash practice is we're going to put a band of water across the top of the um, your piece of paper and that's going to be our sky and then we're going to put another band of water across the middle section here which is going to be sort of the water and um, some of that area that's going to get splashed later on with the um, with the whites okay so all I'm going to do is just take a big brush <clears throat> just plenty of water in it and I'm just going to scoop that across the top of the picture paper I should say and then I'm going to do the same about halfway down three quarters of the way down near the bottom okay just a band of water that's it easy peasy so then we need some color so the color I'm going to use will be um, I think probably just some Payne's gray for this initial initial bit of sky and I'm going to put a fair amount of water in that because I don't want it too dark. So it's just Payne's Grey with um, some water mixed into it. So it's about the consistency of um, a pale tea. Okay, so let's go with this then. So I'm going to start off one side or the other, doesn't really matter, and then just start to flick some of this colour using um, a reasonable size brush into my sky. I'm gonna leave a little bit of um, area of white on this right hand side, because there's a couple of clouds. And we'll leave a little bit on that side and we'll just let that creep down to the edge of where the water, so remember this is a water band, so you're gonna to start to see it collect along that edge. Don't worry, we'll sort that out in a second. Just leave it to do its thing for the moment. Then I'm dipping back into my paint again and I'm going to put some colour into this lower section. So here's my band. I'm not going right to the edge of the band, I'm coming in from the edge. So here's the edge of the wet. I'm coming in probably about, I don't know, a few millimetres or so from the edge of where I've wet the paper. So that I give room for that paint to be able to creep up and also obviously room at the bottom for it to um, be able to move down. I don't want to... Uh, Go right to the edge otherwise i'll have a very hard line there okay so that's fine so i've put some water on both areas now what i'm going to do is take my mop brush again and we're going to get rid of this edge so i'm just going to run this mop brush along that edge just to disappear it okay so then the paint will just creep down into that wet area and then i'm going to do the same along here i mean you can leave some little white spots if you want to those are quite nice um, Sometimes that's quite nice to leave. But it's just very, very simple. I want to keep it really simple today, just so we practice our washes and concentrate on controlling the paint a little bit better. So let's just wash that one more time away, just to nothing. And then we can leave that alone or we can dry it off. I've got a slight tilt to the board. It's probably about five, 10 degrees. So the paint is actually running from the top down the paper this way towards me. Now, a couple of things at the end of that wash, before you even think about hair drying it or tilting it or doing anything, is you're gonna get some, if you have got a tilt on your board, you're gonna to start to get some collection of water um, or paint, excess paint. So I'm just gonna run some tissue to mop up some of these areas. Otherwise, what will happen is, as the paint starts to dry, these wet areas will stay wetter for longer. And then you'll end up with um, back runs where this area of the paper might dry quicker than this area and as that dries you'll get a watermark where that's sort of drying slower than the um, than the area around it and sometimes that's nice you can make that work to your effect but if you don't want that you have to kind of mop up some of these areas with the excess paint or you can tip it and sort of spread the paint out a bit easier is another way of doing it but as long as you don't have any big puddles um, within your washes, you should be fine. Okay, so that's okay. So I'm gonna dry that off now. We don't need to do any more to that. We'll just give that a quick blast with a hairdryer. Um, with our little wash practice is we're gonna put a band of water across the top of the um, your piece of paper. And that's gonna be our sky. And then we're gonna put another band of water across the middle section here, which is gonna be sort of the water and um, some of that area that's going to get splashed later on with the um, with the whites. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just take a big brush 
<clears throat> just plenty of water in it. And I'm just going to scoop that across the top of the picture, paper, I should say. And then I'm going to do the same about halfway down, three quarters of the way down near the bottom. OK, just a band of water. That's it. Easy peasy. So then we need some colour. So the colour I'm going to use will be, um, I think, probably just some Payne's grey for this initial, initial bit of sky. And I'm going to put a fair amount of water in that because I don't want it too dark. So it's just Payne's grey with um, some water mixed into it. So it's about the consistency of um, a pale tea. Okay, so let's go with this then. So I'm going to start off one side or the other, it doesn't really matter, and then just start to flick some of this colour using um, a reasonable sized brush into my sky. I'm going to leave a little bit of um, area of white on this right hand side because there's a couple of clouds. And we'll leave a little bit on that side and we'll just let that creep down to the edge of where the water, so remember this is a water band, so you're going to start to see it collect along that edge. Don't worry, we'll sort that out in a second. Just leave it to do its thing for the moment. Then I'm dipping back into my paint again and I'm going to put some colour into this lower section. So here's my band. I'm not going right to the edge of the band, I'm coming in from the edge. So here's the edge of the wet, I'm coming in probably about I don't know, a few millimetres or so from the edge of where I've wet the paper. So that I give room for that paint to be able to creep up and also obviously room at the bottom for it to um, be able to move down. I don't want to uh, go right to the edge, otherwise I'll have a very hard line there. Okay, so that's fine. So I've put some water on both areas. Now what I'm gonna do is take my mop brush again and we're gonna get rid of this edge. So I'm just going to run this mop brush along that edge just to disappear it. Okay, so then the paint will just creep down into that wet area. And then I'm going to do the same along here. I mean, you can leave some little white spots if you want to. Those are quite nice. Um, sometimes that's quite nice to leave. But it's just very, very simple. I want to keep it really simple today, just so we practice our washes and concentrate on controlling the paint a little bit better. So let's just wash that one more time away, just to nothing. And then we can leave that alone or we can dry it off. I've got a slight tilt to the board. It's probably about five, 10 degrees. So the paint is actually running from the top down the paper this way towards me. Now, a couple of things at the end of that wash before you even think about hair drying it or tilting it or doing anything is you're gonna get some, if you have got a tilt on your board, you're gonna to start to get some collection of water um, or paint, excess paint. So I'm just gonna run some tissue to mop up some of these areas. Otherwise, what will happen is, as the paint starts to dry, these wet areas will stay wetter for longer. And then you'll end up with um, back runs where this area of the paper might dry quicker than this area. And as that dries, you'll get a watermark where that's sort of drying slower than the um, than the area around it and sometimes that's nice you can make that work to your effect but if you don't want that you have to kind of mop up some of these areas with the excess paint or you can tip it and sort of spread the paint out a bit easier is another way of doing it but as long as you don't have any big puddles um, within your washes you should be fine okay so that's okay so I'm going to dry that off now we don't need to do any more to that we'll just give that a quick blast with a hairdryer so that should be reasonably dry now. One thing to note, which I probably should have said at the beginning, is the um, the actual reference painting. I think is an ink or something on a mixed media paper because it's quite. It looks quite regimented in the grain of the um, the actual paper. So this will be similar, but it won't be exact because my paper is slightly different. Um, and also as well, I think I might try and get some runs to come down the mountain to make the mountain a bit more interesting but I'll show you that in due course. Okay, so then the next thing, once your, um, once your paper is now completely dry, make sure it is completely dry, otherwise when you start to put this next wash on, um, it'll be harder to control. So that's, and if you touch it with the back of your hand as well, 
you can sometimes feel whether there's any wet patches rather than if you just touch it with the front of your hand. Um, don't know why, but um, it sometimes helps. Okay, so now then, next thing you're going to want to do, clean your brush off really, really well. And now we're going to draw our mountain with water. So this is clean water in my brush. Um, and we're going to draw the, the peak of our mountain shape. And I want the peak to come about here. So we're just going to start to wet where the mountain is going to come. And obviously, again, it doesn't have to be 100% as accurate as the, um, the reference. It's just inspired by, really. As long as it's got a peak and it looks reasonably realistic, then that's fine. Um, we're going to be editing it anyway as we kind of paint into it. It's just purely to buy us some time while we put the paint on. So we come over this side and then we can just fill all this in. Right, I'm not going to take it too far down. I'm just going to fill in sort of that section. Okay, now then we need to go and pick up some paint and I'm going to go to a slightly smaller paintbrush. I'm going to use some um, Payne's Grey and put a bit of black in there as well, but still reasonably light, not too light. Otherwise, um, once it's dried, it will go, it will just fade to insignificance. So we want it to be darker than the sky. So we need a bit more pigment in the paint than we had in the sky, um, but we don't want it too dark that we can't go any darker. So now I'm gonna to start to drop this in and you'll notice like we did last week, the paint's gonna go wherever we wet the, um, the paper. Okay. And obviously if you've got your, when you, when you drew the mountain with your water, if you've got the shape right, you don't need to do any editing, but I want to change the top of mine. So while this is all nice and wet, I'm just going to change the shape and pull this now out into dry paper. So this is dry out here. So I can actually make that a little bit more crisp at the top, just to give it a bit more shape and perhaps down here we'll add a few more little lumps and bumps to the, um, to the mountain. So remember this wet area is buying us time so that we can do all this little bit of fiddling. If we hadn't have done this, hadn't have wet the paper, and we started fiddling with the, the shape of the mountain, you would find that all of this would be drying too quickly, not allowing you to come back and then address it. So that's what the wetting is kind of doing for us. It's allowing us to have a little play with some of these, some of these shapes, um, but without letting this get too, too um, out of control. So let's just bring that out a little bit more there, come down. And then down, 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 and then out of the picture. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just fill in, add a little bit more color to the rest of this. Maybe even go back up into um, this top area a little bit, remembering not to put any more moisture in there because I don't want it to cauliflower. I'm just using slightly thicker paint. And again, the board is tilted towards me so that the paint is running downhill. Okay, now the next step on this exercise is to get a bigger brush and we need to dip in now to more thick paint. So I'm dipping into thicker paint and I'm gonna use that now, instead of using water like we did in the first instance, I'm gonna use the paint to actually start to work this edge. So nice and thick, almost using the paint neat, still keeping the board tilted um, towards you. So we're coming down, a bit more paint. <clears throat> so thicken it up. 
So this is into dry paper at the moment as we come down to this bottom area. Okay, it's probably enough to about there. And then I'm actually going to use it to break into this bottom area to add some um, some marks, perhaps some dry brush marks for rocks or um, kind of those stony areas at the front. So using the side of the brush, just to break in there. A bit more color at the front here. And obviously a lot of this in this area is all gonna get obliterated. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. Just gonna fill in some nice darks. in there, just for the rocks. Perhaps just break up this bottom edge a bit. So just skimming the brush along that bottom edge just to break it up. So that it's not um, a hard line. Okay, and that will do that. Now, before that dries, as I said, we want, I wanna get a little bit of action in this mountain rather than just being totally stationary so which it doesn't really have in the in the reference so this is just a kind of an ad lib a little bit just mopping up a little bit of that excess because i'm going to tilt the board a bit steeper now and i don't want that to run all the way down so now tilt the board slightly more and i'm going to cover up where I don't want the spray to go. And I just want a little spritz. And this is just gonna make the paint run um, down the, um, the mountain face. So I'll get a little bit more reaction in the areas that are a little bit darker. Oops, I've got water all over my hand. Just to, I don't know. It just adds a bit more interest, I think. <clears throat> okay, might give these a little spritz as well, just to stop them being too solid. So I'm just using my hand just to stop the paint or the water um, filling up any areas that I don't want the um, the paint going. It's going in my reference. Sorry, my laptop just turned itself off for some reason. Don't know why I did that. Okay, and then a little bit down here. Just because I don't like these edges, I just want to lose those edges a little bit. Okay, that's probably enough. Right, now I need to let that kind of dry. This is just to, just take some tissue, <clears throat> just um, kitchen roll, whatever you've got to hand. And I'm just gonna ball it up a little bit. <clears throat> and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dab, <coughs> dab the paint on. I'm just gonna do a bit of printing basically, keep it really simple. Dab the paint over the surface of the tissue. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna start to apply that to the painting so that I get a broken application of paint. I don't know if you can see that. Let me do it again over a darker area. So you don't want big globs all over your tissue. So make sure it's reasonably reasonably spread out. And then you want to just change the direction of the, the tissue and you'll get this nice, I don't know, is that showing up okay? Is it coming? Hopefully you yeah. can see, it, right? You should get a nice application of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the paint um broken over the surface and the lighter you press the less paint obviously that comes off so you can actually control the the effect by pressing lighter or pressing harder Ooh. so let's just do a bit more of that so we want a bit yeah, more the spray. Like the sponge, do you? you can use a sponge yeah you could use a coral sponge anything i'd say if you're using a coral you know a good coral sponge with acrylic white is make sure you wash it out pretty quickly afterwards, otherwise it will go rock hard. All right, okay. All right, I mean, if you don't have 
I mean, most of you, I'm sure, have got tissue. But the other thing is you could possibly use is like some netting if you want a different type of effect. You know, yeah. you can kind of ball up a bit of netting and, and, and kind of do that and get different right. shapes. Anything really that's going to allow you to kind of print with it. Um, so anyway, let's just wang a bit more of this on. And that's a technical term. <laughs> um, wing, let's wing. Yeah. So I'm just going to soften off some of these areas that have got a bit harder. Uh, and we want to come a little bit higher on this right hand side. <clears throat> Let's print a bit up there and we need to come down lower. So a bit more paint. Coming down into our foreground rocky area. So we just soften off these rocks down here. A bit more over here, and then we'll do a bit of flicking just to uh, finish off. So it's quite a nice, nice, e easy-ish, hopefully easy-ish, hopefully nobody's pulling their hair out, um, uh, painting to have a go at really. So there we go, so that's enough of that. And then I'm just gonna do a bit of flicking now. So I'm gonna move to the, um, let's go with a, let's try the watercolor white and see if that's, if not, then I'll use the gouache. I take a palette knife. Oh, so you don't have to use a palette knife. You could use. No, um, you could basically just use the end of a brush if you wanted to. You could just kind I'm of do sure that. I'm sure you told us to have one, but you can do that, and you can kind of just. That's good. End of the brush. Dob it on. You know, kind of dob it on that way if you want to. Dob it instead of wang it. Okay. Dobbing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting all the technical terms today. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm just going to put a little bit, hopefully this is going to flick, I have no idea if it's going to work. So, yeah, a little bit, there we go, yeah, it's kind of stringy, I might need to put a bit of water in there. Don't know that I want stringy marks, I want some spotty marks. Stuart, I've got an acrylic uh, painter pen, white yeah. one, would that, that work, would work okay? Yeah. The thing you've got to be careful of with anything where you're dobbing or you're um, you're using a pen is to try and make your marks random. So try try not maybe even close your eyes or um, kind of uh, do you see where this spatter is kind of going down in an unpredictable fashion? Sometimes when you do it as a pen or you do it at the end of a brush, you start to get into a little bit too orientated, you know, too much pattern based with the way that you're making your marks. So just be careful of that. That's what I'm saying. That you don't put all your all your dots in the same the same way. Oh, my Sorry, Stuart, can you do another splash so I can see how you're holding the palette line? Uh, yeah, I was just um, sorting my laptop. It seems to have turned itself off again. So um, yeah, I've just put a bit of water into this watercolor white. I don't know if you can see. So I've, I've got. Can you see that on yeah. the camera? Yep. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've got that. I'm it's just, just on the end of the it. just on the end of the um, the palette knife. Yeah. So I'm just pulling back oh, the palette okay. knife, and then just wanging it like that. So just giving it a flick. Yeah. <laughs> just make sure that the palette knife is facing downwards and not upwards. Otherwise, you're going to get it all over yourself. I've got a than... plastic palette knife, and I don't think that works as well. It needs to have a bit of spring in it. Otherwise, you won't get you won't get anything come off. Um, what have I done with the paint? There it is. Got loads of spring, but it still <laughs> doesn't seem to work very well. You need to put a bit of water in the paint. That's what I found. <coughs> so dilute the paint slightly, and then it should it should hopefully flick. Let's go with this one. There's a bit more paint on this one. Um, if it hurts your finger, by the way, then you could just use um, you could take a brush. If you're doing a lot of this, you wouldn't want to do too much with this. You can just take the brush like that and then you kind of flick it with the brush um, to stop your finger hurting if you want to. 
یا این هفته Right, going that way. Okay, and then we'll have a little bit down the bottom here. We go. We're taking some of the nice cerulean blue. And then it's a case of um, mimicking a little bit of the shapes that are in the reference, but don't stick religiously to it. You know, you don't have to make this blob exactly the same as the blob in the reference. It's more about just inspiration, okay? So I'm just gonna start off up here and then just start to dob on, <laughs> again, dobbing, um, in a fairly loose fashion. You don't wanna be too, try and be too literal with it. And then I'm going to <coughs> jump into a bit of um, crimson next. And that will make this go slightly purple, a bit more crimson. So we're just bringing these colours into one another. And that's the key here, really, is to try and work the colours together so that you don't have separation between the colour palettes. Um, the colour shapes, I should say. So a little bit in there, perhaps bring that a little bit higher. A bit more stronger red. And more crimson, a bit neater, or thicker, I should say. Bring a bit of that out there. And then I'm just going to use a bit of water just to soften the edge off. Oh. Perhaps a bit of blue. That's the blue again. Oh. Bit of blue there. Okay, and then we need a little bit of yellow. Let's go. Bit of yellow, just flash of yellow here and there. But fairly abstract is what you want. Don't get too neat with it. Move to the next shape. Oop. My little pan keeps coming out of my palette. So let's have another dob of colour. Try and keep it fairly random. That's really what you want. Don't make it too regimented. Just make sure you keep cleaning your brush off and then dipping into slightly different colours, perhaps a little bit of red now. Bit of red up here, a little bit of red there, some red shape, a bit of yellow into the red to go slightly orangey. So any nice colors you think you want to use really, it's not, there's no hard and fast rule with this one. Just kind of keep it loose is the key. Loose and wet. Lo well, the paper's dry, but yes, the actual yeah, area you're working in needs to be wet, yeah. Yeah, it's like it and wet water. Yeah. Let's keep that brush clean, a bit more blue. Pop <coughs> the blue there. Some more blues. Maybe even a little bit of cobalt just to change the blue slightly.
to this one. Wash it out with a bit of water. Into red. A bit of red. I've got a big hair coming out of this brush. Red. And then if you want to go then in obviously into yellow, then better to go from red to yellow than it is from oops, than it is from blue to yellow you end up with green if you don't want green then having a red in between will make it go keep it from going um, uh, green uh, just a bit of yellow there a few more spots here and there just to sort of add a bit of interest. And then the next thing I'm going to do is using the same brush, holding my hand flat and the brush at the end, okay, like this, I'm gonna then tap the brush against my hand to allow the paint to come off. Oh. You see how it sort of just spats that, down? That's green paint. That's green, so I'm gonna change it now to, I don't know, some other colour. Let's go with um, a bit of blue. So we'll spatter on a little bit of blue. Maybe another few dobs of blue here. Cool. A bit more blue. Oh! <laughs> Try not to get it oh, over there's itself. a lot of blobs. <laughs> Yes, I've got the same. You've got a lot of blobs, have you? Yeah. yeah. A lot of blobs. Oh, Good. a lot of blobs. <laughs> All over the dining room table as well. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, at least it's watercolour paint. Yes. <laughs> right, OK. So we need to leave that now to <coughs> dry. So again, just make sure you've not got any large deposits anywhere particularly. And um, what do we do if we have, Stuart? Just take your tissue yeah, and sure then just... Okay. just um, just lift out a little bit of the excess, not all of the paint, because you don't want it to go too dull, but no. just so that you don't have big dollops of paint. It's better to use the corner of the tissue rather than, say, the body of the tissue and just let yeah. it soak up like that. You tend to get a better result that way. Because <laughs> you don't want to change the shape of the actual piece of paint. You just want to lift out some of the water. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give that a quick, quick blast with a hairdryer, <clears throat> and then I'll show you how to do the line. Just do that quickly on there. The brush, right at the end. I'm not holding it down here because I want the stroke to be nice and long. Okay, so holding it nice and high on the brush, and then in one stroke, I'm just going to come down and around. Mm. Okay, for the first uh, kind of area, or stalk, I should say. Then maybe we'll have another one coming or bending. Um, let's put a bit more water in that, it's a bit dry. Coming down this way. <clears throat> and perhaps there's another little one in there. And maybe a very faint one so there's more water, just perhaps coming up the background there, like so. Okay, so that's that. Dry that, and then we'll put the darker marks on.
Okay, so that's that dry. So for the next bit then, I'm just gonna use some ink, but you can just use watercolor, you could use, um, uh, yeah, just plenty of watercolor or acrylic ink or whatever you want. I'm only using ink just because it's a bit easier. I haven't got to keep mixing up thin paint. <clears throat> I'm going to use it in exactly the same way as I would if it was watercolor. So I'm just loading up the, I'm just dipping it into the paint, loading up my brush. So I've got a nice quantity of um, paint in my brush. And is I'm going to start. Black, off with, it is black, yeah. So just a standard black kind of any kind of black will do. So I'm going to start off on this bottom left hand corner. Um, the only thing really you need to watch on doing all of this is the overlap of the stalks. OK, so if this particular stalk that's up here it actually comes down and goes behind this flower. So that's why I'm starting with this flower first. So I don't bring that stalk over the top because if I bring it over the top, I, you know, I can't really amend it afterwards. So let's start off here then. So I'm going to do a little shape for the base of the bud of the flower. And then from that, I'm actually going to start to bring out my petals. So I'm going to do the main petal first, which is that sort of big um, shape that kind of comes up over and then back. And then we've got another shape on the right of that that comes up over and then they all come back to the same point so then we've got another one here up and over and then there's another one over here just make sure they overlap and another one back to there and then there's this funny, I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'll put it in anyway. So sort I of hatched. I'm assuming that means it's a petal in the distance. Okay, and then there's a stalk that we need to bring off of this. And it's got two lines. So we've got one line and then we've got a second line. And that's number one. So let's go on to do this fella up the top here. So again, we start off with the, the idea of this shape at the bottom. So it's kind of coming in. <clears throat> you could do the stalk first if you want to, but I'm going to start off with the petals. So it kind of converges at the bottom, goes up, over, and then back. And then we've got a little petal off of that one. There's another one kind of there. The key to this really is just to be confident. Don't, <laughs> is another is another technical term. Don't dilly dally with the, um, with, but particularly if you're doing it with the brush. If you try and do these marks too slowly, it will look fiddled with and it won't feel fresh. So you've got to be a little bit careful about being too pedestrian with the mark making. Just go for it. And then we've got another little one out there. And then there's one there and then that's hatched as well. Number two, and then we've got the stalk for number two. So let's bring the stalk. Actually, my stalk's gonna need to come this way the way I've painted it, but never mind. So coming down one and then down two. It's rather thick stalk, but never mind. And then number three, very quickly, we'll go on here. So let's again do the base. Uh, we've got a big one that comes up back another one over and then two three one in between done that one 
number four. And then there's some little smaller ones. <coughs> And a bigger one. And then we need a stalk on that one. So let's have the stalk going the other way on this one. And we'll overlap it behind. Oops, went a bit thick, never mind. And that's it.